Hi everyone, welcome to the seventh series of Cheltenham Chart and this will be for the 2024 Cheltenham Festival. It is amazing that the videos have gone on now for seven years. I am immensely proud of my results with the 53 bets I've put up for the Cheltenham Festival and lots of people ask me why the videos are only for Cheltenham. It's plainly and simply that's where I feel I have my biggest edge in betting and that's where I'm comfortable putting my bets up. For me I live and die by those results and I am very very proud of how I've done so far. It's no guarantee of future results but I think anyone who's followed all 53 bets could afford a bad year if we have one but hopefully we won't. The videos have progressed from just bets for the festival into a weekly analysis video of runners who I think will participate at the festival and my assessment of them as they go forward and in this video I'm just going to talk primarily about my goals for the season, my aims etc but I will also talk about a couple of horses who run at Weatherby at the weekend. I have a lot of thank yous to say but basically it's to all the faithful viewers who've been watching, especially last year. There were only bets for the festival on the day last year and that was mainly due to the anti-post markets which I will go into a bit more in the video. So many kind comments came in and I did end the season a little bit abruptly last year but we did complete the Cheltenham Festival successfully again. And I hope to do similar this season. Anti post is extremely, extremely hard now. It's changed a lot even in the six years. It's gone from, I don't know how to explain it. I think the markets are extremely tight, but actually, I will be honest with people now. I don't want to strike too many bets with the bookmakers. The horror stories you hear about not getting paid out and the way the underhand things that the bookmakers are doing really, really put me off back, back in any sort of horses. But I want to do another series. I want to try and pick winners. But I will not be putting up a lot of bets. I really do, like I say, care about my profit and loss. I'm not going to reset it if I lose seven bets this season, eight bets, ten bets this season, and just pretend that this season didn't happen. Uh, and I do care, and, and I've seen other tipsters say, oh, well, if people back my horses, that's their own problem, and I don't really care, etc., etc. Um, well, I do care. I really care because I back them, and I back them, for me, personally, heavily, and um, I need them to win, or I certainly want them to win. Saying need them to win is a bit overboard, really, because I'd like them to win because I've backed them, but I don't bet money I can't afford to lose and nobody should. So, like I say, this is going to be Series 7 and uh, I hope I can be successful again. My plan would be to have a weekly video. If there's not too many races, then I would probably only do a bi-weekly video. Looking at the runners that ran last week, I'm not sure that we saw any Cheltenham winners. It was an impressive performance by Gentleman's Game, probably a warrior for, for backers of uh, Brave Man's Game that he couldn't win. But I think a race fit Gentleman's Game, getting £6, both horses come out with a lot of credit. Do I see Gentleman's Game as a Gold Cup winner? Now this is a horse that I put up a few years back. I've constantly got his targets wrong. I was assured he was going for the Albert Bartlett and then within hours of me putting the bet up for the Albert Bartlett he was no longer going for the race so I don't know where this horse will go can he win a gold cap I would doubt it myself he's got six pounds he was fit on Saturday and although he's run a fantastic race I'm just not sure he's that class for me he's a grand national horse I'd like to see him in that race rather than the gold cap. But if it was a weaker gold cap, if we don't see the galloping Deschamps of last season, then who knows? 
is he as good a candidate as Jerry Colomb? Because they're in the same ownership. I'm not really sure. I think at the moment I would be staying out of a bet on gentlemen's game for a gold cap because I'm not convinced he's of that standard. I think he likes small fields. And I would prefer to see the horse be prepared for entry, although that's a big field. It'll be a smaller field than usual, but I think he's a thorough, thorough stay. Although his handicap mark may be a little high for Grand National. We'll just have to see, but he certainly wouldn't be a bet in either race for me at the moment. Getting on to Antipost, post you just have to say that the markets are very difficult. Like I say, I don't trust the bookmakers much these days. But then you look at the prices, and I did talk about Lossy Mouth as my early, early fancy for the Mayor's Hurdle last season after the festival. This horse was priced up at 7 to 1 initially after the festival, and I did say I was looking at that price. I will admit I had a little bit of 5 to 1. Now, that was just, I don't know why I did that really. I was really upset that I'd missed the sevens, but I took a little bit of fives. Now, the horse is best priced threes now. But it just shows you that that horse has done absolutely nothing in the time between winning at the festival and now. And yet there's another two points clipped off the price. Considering the horse isn't going to run until the new year, I think that's a complete overreaction. And although I think she's a potential superstar, She's only a five-year-old. Five-year-olds have a poor record coming out of the Triumph Hurdle. I'm not really sure why this horse can be anywhere near that sort of price. It's the sort of thing that the bookmakers do and they're getting away with. Every horse is actually priced as if it's actually at the post already. I think it's very difficult to bet empty post. And like I say, I care about my results. I, I cannot come on to a review and just dismiss the festival. Oh, I had a poor festival and I'm not really bothered. I am bothered. I did well last year, but I'm still bothered by the fact that I put up horses such as Tamures and Takeo on the first day. The only two bets of the first day. Very poor bets. And I don't like putting off poor bets. If I'm going to lose, I'd rather be on the bets like Imperi Pass and Jerry Colomb in a double where I got a run for my money. Imperi Pass won well. Jerry Colomb was unluckily beaten or the bet on stump town where probably bet uh, a horse who was just beaten by someone who was slightly better handicapped but there was only a head in it that's a good bet i like betting horses like that i do not like betting the tamuris sort of bets or the takeo sort of bets that's not good uh, for me because i haven't had a run for my money and it doesn't look good for the channel when the horses run as poorly as that because i do care and when other videos are putting up horses such as time hill for the brown advisory uh, uh, and saying that oh well it's the punter's fault for backing it i i only put it up and they haven't even backed it then that's simply not the way that i think these uh, channels should operate if you haven't backed the horse you shouldn't be putting it out to others and if you really don't care if it wins and you've got a complete disregard for other panthers then because they shouldn't have been stupid enough to put it up then I, that's the way some people would operate and not the way i would operate so although it looks like i'm slagging other channels they are bookie sponsored they have a responsibility supposedly and yet they, they don't seem to care what sort of horses they put up so this has been a short video. I will be back hopefully next week with uh, some horses to discuss. But all I can say to the, the viewers who are watching my channel is thank you for all your support. I hope I can do as well in the seventh season as I have in the previous six. Not all of them have been hugely profitable, but we've always managed to get at least our money back and on a good few years we've got a lot more than our money back so thank you for watching today and i hope you'll continue to watch the channel throughout the season up to the cheltenham festival in 2024 thanks for watching bye for now